part three about how my mom got with my sister's boyfriend. So like I said, obviously we could hear stuff. We saw their clothes on the floor. So I took a video and I took a picture. But obviously you couldn't see anything. And I didn't want to tell my dad first. So my best friend and I, we went downstairs. We went to the carnival. And when my sister got back, she ended up getting back with Ben. Because obviously after he was done, he went back to my sister. I know this is confusing, but try to keep up. So I asked my sister if she can pretty please take me and my friend down to the pool to go swimming. So my sister came down with us and then I was like, I have to tell you something. So then I ended up showing her the photos and the videos. And at this point, she's like, what the fuck? So surprisingly, without choking this man to death, she goes upstairs, she goes to sleep. And then the next morning, she goes and has a talk with my mom. So my mom, my sister, my friend and I, we all sat down at the buffet in the morning and had breakfast. And my dad and Ben weren't there. Well, long story short, my mom ended up saying, it's not fair that you bring all these young guys around me, da-da-da-da-da. Are you really going to break up our family because of this? And till this day, my dad still does not know about it. I just had to let you know your about how somebody stole my $12,000 dog at a house party. So a little background information, I was 17 and a junior in high school, and I decided to throw a party at my house before winter break. So usually whenever I threw parties, I would always have everybody in the basement because I had a pretty big basement. There was a sliding glass door to the outside, so nobody had to go upstairs to get in or get out. And I would always lock the door to the upstairs just in case anybody decided to wander up the stairs. And because I didn't think anybody would get in upstairs, I let my dogs run around the house. So everybody who I invited showed up and I guess that my address got leaked because a bunch of random people started showing up at my house. And it's not like I didn't have neighbors. No, I lived in a very tight cul-de-sac. So people were parking in front of my neighbor's driveways, in my neighbor's driveways. So I called my parents and eventually I had to have my neighbors call the cops on my house party. My own party. Like for part two. Part two about how somebody stole my $12,000 dog at my house party. So like I said, I had to call my parents and they got the cops called on the house. So that way I could get everybody that I did not know out of the freaking house. Thankfully, my friends and I hadn't started drinking yet because literally five minutes after my friends showed up, random people started showing up in big groups. So after everybody clears out, I go to walk upstairs and I have my keys in my hand ready to unlock the door. The door was literally busted open. Like somebody had to have kicked the doorknob because the frame was cracked, the door was cracked. It was bad. So I'm freaking out. I wasn't even thinking about my dog at the time until my friend Kirsten asked to see my new puppy. Because Kirsten had just got home from college and she had only ever seen the dog over FaceTime. So we're searching all over the house and we cannot find my fucking dog. Well, when my parents got home that night, they pretty much grounded me for life. But then I want to say a month later, my friend Jake, who was there that night, called me freaking the fuck out. Like for part three. Part three about how my $12,000 dog got stolen at my house party. So like I said, we couldn't find Mimi. Uh, my parents pretty much grounded me for life. I get a call from my friend Jake, who was there that night of the night of the party. And he's like flipping out. He's like, I think I know who took Mimi, aka my dog. So I'm like freaking out. I go into the kitchen. I put him on speakerphone so that way my parents can hear. And he was like, well, my girlfriend Avery has this one girl who was at the party that night on Snapchat. And I was like, okay, and what the fuck about it? And he was like, well, the one night we were laying in bed together and she was going through people's Snapchat stories. And then she got onto this girl's private story. And I told her, that's my friend's dog, the one that got stolen. So then we looked her up on Instagram, we went on her Visco, and she has a crap ton of pictures of your dog on her Visco. So somehow his girlfriend Avery finds this girl's address. My parents were like, oh, we want to call the police. Somehow I talked them out of doing that. Long story short, I went to her house, I got my dog back after telling her parents about it. But when I was leaving, I ran over her. Okay, so a few days ago, YSL sent me their new mascara, and I thought that I would try it out with you guys. It's actually super cute. When you open it up, it says 200% volume. And this is the mascara. And I'm going to be trying it out against the Bad Girl Bang mascara. And if it can live up to these standards, then I will be shook because no other mascara really can compare to this one for me. So on this side, I'm going to do the Bad Girl Bang mascara and I'm going to do one coat. Okay, so this is this side after one coat. 
Now this is what the brush looks like. I usually don't like these types of brushes. So I don't really know how this is gonna work. Like I did the other side, I'm gonna do one coat on this side. Okay, this side looks way more lifted than this side. I'm gonna do one more coat and then I'll be back. Okay, I'm kind of shook. This eye just looks so much more lifted than this eye. But let me know what you guys think in the comments. Ugh, it's been so hard trying to meet people since the pandemic. I feel like I cannot talk to anybody and I have the worst social anxiety. Okay, well, why don't you just try out a dating app? Ew, what are you talking about? Literally, almost all dating apps are out of date and way too formal. No, thank you. There is this dating app called XOXO and it's completely up to date on our generation and it's super diverse. What do you mean by diverse? Oh, well, I don't know. Maybe if you let me finish, I could actually tell you. Okay, fine. Go ahead. So you're going to take this magic quiz, which is all about the foods you like, the music you like. Whoa, wait a minute. This is saying to check off everything that sounds like me. I don't want people knowing I wear skinny jeans. They're going to judge me. Calm down. It is a completely judgment-free zone. I promise. All right, well, my work is done here. Besides, your alarm's going to go off in like five seconds. What are you talking about? Story time, my boyfriend cheated on me, so I cheated on him with his cousin. So a little background information, I was 18 and a freshman in college. So my boyfriend and I have been dating for three years going on four. And we were pretty much what you call a very toxic relationship. We would break up with each other, then get back together five minutes later. I would say that it's all really my boyfriend's fault. Because instead of spending time with me, he would rather go out to the club and sleep with any whore that he could find. But he would always start an argument with me before he went to the club so that way he had a reason to cheat on me. And he's been doing this ever since we first started dating. I don't know why I didn't take that as a red flag, but I'm a dumb bitch who lacks common sense and is completely blind to red flags. So I started a private Snapchat, but I used it as almost like an OnlyFans. Except it was free. I added a bunch of guys on there and my boyfriend's cousins. His one cousin was my best friend and would low-key hype me up. Like for part two. Part two about how my boyfriend cheated on me, so I cheated on him with his cousin. So like I said, I made this private Snapchat that was basically like an OnlyFans. And I had his cousin on there who was low-key my best friend. And he would low-key always hype me up on my thirst traps. So eventually I sent him a whole nude picture of myself. His cousin had a girlfriend, but neither of us were going to tell our significant others. And I told his cousin that I would sleep with him if he cheats on me again. Well, what do you know? A few nights later, he calls me starting an argument before he goes to the club. So I go to bed. I'm bawling my eyes out. And he calls me at three in the morning asking for me to get an Uber for him and some friends. But I hear a girl talking in the back. So obviously I gave him a hard time about it. So he hangs up on me, calls me 20 minutes later, and I hear this girl talking in Spanish in the background. Me being me, I assume the worst. I assume that he cheated on me. So he calls me the next day saying that we need to talk. I go over there. He says he doesn't want to be with me anymore. Life for part three. Part three about how my boyfriend cheated on me, so I cheated on him with his cousin. So like I said, he calls me over to his house. He says that I'm the problem in the relationship. He I'm the reason why he cheats on me 24-7. So I'm like, you know what? Whatever. I leave and I go to his cousin's house and his cousin kind of does the deed on me. After that, I leave because I really wasn't trying to do the nasty. So a few weeks later, my boyfriend texts me saying, I need to talk to you, da-da-da. And we're not together at this point, mind you. And he's like, hey, like, I just feel like you're really not being honest with me. Like, I want to get back together, but I feel like you're unfaithful. And I'm like, what the fuck do you mean? You literally cheat on me 24-7. So I give him my phone to go through it. I thought I deleted everything, but I didn't delete a conversation between my best friend and I. So I'm bawling my eyes out, turn on my game face for lying. And I'm like, I swear to God, like, I didn't cheat on you. It was a prank. But he did the nasty with that girl, so I think we're even. So obviously I got back with him and we've been together for four years. Black is traditional. But if you'd prefer pink, or vermilion, or chartreuse. <sighs> no, you might make me jealous. No way! You're not sewing buttons in my eyes! Oh, but we need a yes if you want to stay here. So sharp, you won't feel it. Story time about how I slept with my teacher and got pregnant. Little background information, I was 18 and in 12th grade. I had always had trouble in school, especially history class. And I had always had tutors and everything like that. And eventually I just got tired of trying to get my grade up because I realized that it was never going to happen. So my teacher was 27 years old. We're going to call him Mike. And Mike had a girlfriend. 
He had been staying after school helping me like every single day from like three o'clock till five o'clock. Well, the one day I had this outfit on that maybe wasn't that appropriate and I was being super flirty with him the whole time. To be honest, I just didn't want to put in the effort to get up my grades. And then 10 minutes later, he started getting handsy and I told him that if he wanted to do anything, he had to get my grade up for me. So he did just that. Well, for the next couple of months, I would go over to his house to study, like for part two. Part two about how I slept with my teacher and got pregnant. So like I said, I got tired of putting effort in to get my grade up. So I let him hit and then I was going over his house after school. Well, later on at the end of the year, I find out that I'm pregnant. And because I was 18, I really didn't have to care about what my parents thought. So I told him and surprisingly, this man was on board with it. He was like, oh my god, like, let's do this. I'm so happy. And I was like, what the fuck? Well, his ex-girlfriend found out, so she went and told the school he got fired. And three years later, we're still together raising our child. Time about how I stole my best friend's boyfriend. So a little background information. I was 14 and in eighth grade. And we're going to call my best friend Ashley. Ashley was really nice at first. She always had my back when I needed her. But then out of nowhere, she started being super rude to me. She turned into one of those pick-me girls that would always make fun of you in front of other guys, talk crap about you to the guy that you liked. Well, the one day I hear her talking shit about me whenever we were in class, and everybody could hear her. She was literally on the whole other side of the class. And I asked her, hey, like, why were you talking about me? She was like, no, I was talking about a different girl. And I had a pretty unique name, so I was like, who else in the school could you have been talking about? But I just brushed it off. Well, then we were in algebra class and I heard her talking shit about me again. How I do my makeup so bad and I can never get a boyfriend. Like I'm so ugly and all that stuff. Well, she thought that I wasn't mad at her. So she came up to me the one day and was like, OMG, I have a boyfriend. Like for part two. Part two about how I stole my best friend's boyfriend. So like I said, she would talk shit about me all the time. And I only confronted her that one time. So she thought that we were all good. So the one day before class starts, she runs up to me. She's like, oh my God, you'll never guess what? I have a boyfriend. She's like, he's so cute. He's really popular. He's on the football team. And I was like, girl, whatever. Nobody cares. Until I'm sitting in my first class of the day. And I remember that she made out with my boyfriend last year. I forgave her, of course. But because karma was taking a little bit too long, I figured I had to do something about it myself. So my plan was to hook up with her boyfriend. Do I feel bad about it? Absolutely not. So I went to my school's football game, and guess who I saw? My best friend's boyfriend. She couldn't make it that night. She had something to do, so I had him all to myself. So I went up to him. I started flirting with him, and I was like, oh, you should break up with your girlfriend and date me instead. But then he was like, I thought you guys were best friends, and I would never date you. Like for part... Part three about how I stole my best friend's boyfriend. So like I said, I went to the football game. She wasn't there because she had something else to do. I went up to him. I started flirting. I told him that he should break up with her and date me instead. And I also said that she was a bitch and a whole bunch of other stuff. And he was like, why would you say that about your best friend? And he was like, I would never date you. And I had a feeling this would happen. So I had photoshopped a picture of her and this guy that she sits next to in her lab class. And I showed it to him and I was like, see, she's cheating on you. So he was pissed off. He gave me his number. And the next day he came over to my house. We cuddled, watched movies. We kissed. After three months, Ashley found out. We hadn't talked to each other since then. But now I am 16 in 10th grade and still with her ex-boyfriend. Funny thing though, the picture that I photoshopped with her and that guy, she's literally dating him now. So you're welcome, I guess. But anyway, she still goes around talking shit on me. I mean, who can blame her? I did steal. Du lịch tại nhà cùng bộ siêu tập Lash Velvet tìm siêu đẹp nhà BBIA.
besties they all slip Fall straight through up in the tips Why'd you wanna throw away us Because of one mistake I'm only a human babe why my best friend cut me off so like i said she finally decided to go to college me being super happy for her i would watch her kid whenever she would have to go into school well the one night i'm making dinner and her kids in the living room i'm in the kitchen and i go into the living room to tell him that dinner is ready and i see my dog backed up into a corner and him with a fire poker literally poking my dog i wouldn't even call it poking he was pretty much trying to stab my dog my dog has its ears back, it's shaking with anxiety. So I go over and I rip it out of his hands and I smack his fingers. And I tell him, we do not do that to the dog. Like, what is wrong with you? So my friend comes, picks him up. A few days later, she comes to drop him off again. And she says, hey, can I talk to you? I already knew what it was about, so I was expecting this. She was like, Gavin told me that you hit him last time he was here. And I was like, yeah, he pretty much was stabbing my dog. And then she's like, oh, well, you know, he doesn't mean any harm. He plays with the dogs like that at home. Like, okay, sis. Part two about why my best friend cut me off. So like I said, she finally decided to go to college. Me being super happy for her, I would watch her kid whenever she would have to go into school. Well, the one night I'm making dinner and her kid's in the living room, I'm in the kitchen, and I go into the living room to tell him that dinner is ready. And I see my dog backed up into a corner and him with a fire poker, literally poking my dog. I wouldn't even call it poking, he was pretty much trying to stab my dog. My dog has its ears back, it's shaking with anxiety. So I go over and I rip it out of his hands and I smack his fingers. And I tell him, we do not do that to the dog. Like, what is wrong with you? So my friend comes, picks him up. A few days later, she comes to drop him off again. And she says, hey, can I talk to you? I already knew what it was about, so I was expecting this. She was like, Gavin told me that you hit him last time he was here. And I was like, yeah, he pretty much was stabbing my dog. And then she's like, oh, well, you know, he doesn't mean any harm. He plays with the dogs like that at home. Like, okay, sis. Story time about how I tried to stick up for this kid on the bus, but it got me suspended. So a little background information. I was 12 and in seventh grade. So it was a Wednesday. And when school ended, I got on the afternoon bus. And there was this boy named Josh that I was friends with. So I went and I sat next to him on the bus. After like five minutes of us waiting for the bus driver to get back on the bus, this boy named Kai that everybody loves for some reason comes over and rips me out of the seat. After that, he sits down next to Josh and starts punching him and screaming at him. So I grab this kid by his book bag, rip him out of the seat, and I sit next to Josh. I put my headphones in, plug in my phone, and this kid grabs the phone, throws it at the front of the bus. And there weren't any adults on the bus at this time because our bus driver was using the bathroom. And I didn't go up and get my phone because I knew that if I moved, this kid was probably going to hurt Josh again. So then this kid starts trying to punch me. So I punch him in the stomach. An adult comes on the bus, finally, like for part two. 